Care Collab time. Welcome. Thank you so much for being here. Yes, this is Maxillaria variabilis. In my collection, he is known as Cousin It, I think, for obvious reasons. Yes, he wears sunglasses when he's on camera because he is my sidekick and a little personality unto himself. In preparation of this video, he has started to burst forth with blooms that is just astounding. I'm not even going to bother counting them. Every time a little bloom fades, more blooms come. It's like a firework display right now. But yes, this is Cousin It. If you're new to my channel, he features ever so often and he needs his shades because of the light levels. So let's get into how I care for my Maxillaria variabilis. Light levels, you can see the reflection in the sunglasses. My facades are white. He gets a lot of light. I am here in southern Spain, and despite the fact that our winters aren't exactly pleasant, they are sunny. So for the time being, he's up against a west side of the hedge, facing east, but he gets the light from the facade reflecting off of him for most of the day and every time we have sun. This is his winter space right now, where in the morning he also gets direct sun before it heads up behind the hedge behind me. The level of the sun being so much lower in the sky doesn't really rise above the hedge. But his airflow is incredible here, which brings me to the subject of pests. I'm always concerned about orchids that have such a tight growth habit with so many structures bunched up against each other Pests are always a worry, especially seeing as my Maxillaria variabilis lives outdoors 24-7, 365 days or 66, depending a year. I have not had pest issues on this orchid that would have taken it down. Last year, I had quite a few aphids that destroyed some of the beautiful pristine display. These blooms aren't exactly large, but I had some black aphids that decided to make their home on my blooms, which was a shame because it took the blooms out sooner than normal. Cousin It started to go into bloom mid-December with just, you know, hinting at one or two blooms, and he is now literally in his prime. So the only pests I've ever had to deal with were aphids. Now, this year he is a little bit earlier in bloom, which makes it so much easier to keep the aphids off. That is the advantage. The blooms are also lasting much, much longer. So I am very, very happy for his timing this time of year because for this care collab, he's got to look his best. That includes maybe removing some of the dead leaves, but I don't do that prematurely unless they pop off relatively easily. So you can see that some leaves have brown tips on them and that is just due to age. Here is a leaf, for example. Let's see if I just pull on it, it comes off really, really easily. That is the stage when I work on him. And every once in a while, I'll go in and pluck off any of the blooms that are old. But that is just me fussing with him and enjoying his beautiful spectacle. My cousin, it is my cousin, it. You see how that just flows off? <laughs> I better get back to Maxillaria variabilis just to avoid any confusion, but he is not fragrant. The orchid room has a Maxillaria variabilis that is fragrant and they supposedly smell of caramel. Now, what a shame. Imagine this spectacle with a fragrance that would be amazing, but we can't have everything. He is in an orchid top. His setup is a large orchid top. And can you believe it? Four years ago, he didn't fill the pot at all. But he is super, super vigorous. So the orchid top has Lekka Ceramus and a little bit of lava rock in it. And from then on in, I haven't moved him. I wanted to do a cleanup last year. I just can't get myself to do it. What I do do on occasions is go in and remove the maidenhair fern that grows very, very happily, giving him the appearance of the ZZ Top duo with the beard. But I do take that off because if there's any kind of pest infestation, maidenhair fern in that very damp and closed environment at the base of his pot, it brings in some mealybugs and I want to avoid that. So I've only had that experience once and since then it's over. Any salt accumulation around the orchid top is due to age. It doesn't affect him at all. His temperatures that he has to tolerate here vary all the way from 5 degrees Celsius at the lowest to the highest of 40 plus degrees Celsius during the summer. It is not often, but it can happen. 
And in the summer, he is in perma shade. I really do try to protect him from any of the harsh sun because he needs a lot of water. Even this time of year where we do get a lot of rain, it is cold rain, he can tolerate that. There is no danger of rot because of the amount of airflow that he gets. So if it's pouring day after day after day with rain, and that is my puppy King there having an inspection, getting involved. All right, sorry about that. But he gets rained on day in, day out, if we have days that are consecutive nonstop rain. The airflow and all of that avoids any kind of rot. I do not get botrytis on the blooms either because of the airflow. So with such a dense and tightly packed orchid, airflow is fundamental and rot won't be a problem. Fertilizing, whoa, all year round. I don't stop, 300 parts per million, always into his dish. And in the summer, usually in the morning, he gets his 300 parts per million, but by mid afternoon, that is all absorbed, not evaporated, because you can see just by his growth habit, there is no sun coming into his tray there. So that is not evaporation. He literally drinks all of that. So midday, I go in again, and I give him another little dose of just plain RO water, which could be considered a flush, but really it isn't. My flushing in the summer is just dousing him with water. I spray him from all sides, all angles, including filling the tray. So by his size, he really, really needs a lot of water. It also helps to cool the leaves down from the hot, dry winds that I experience here. A very hungry candidate, but he is very, very vigorous and he deserves his place on my patio because he's an outdoorsman. He loves to be outdoors. He never comes inside. And I am very grateful for that because judging by his vigor, every year that I've had him, he has doubled. And now, considering his size, he quadruples in size year in, year out. So this one will have to be addressed at some point but I don't think I will ever do a transplant. What I'm going to do is probably start taking off all the very, very long growths that he has because that is the easiest way to propagate him. Literally just go in and take out a growth all the way to the base, cut it off, and then put it into some kind of a container to propagate and get the roots to grow on that piece. I could probably take off a hundred pieces off of him, individual pieces, not chunks, of course, but individual, and you wouldn't see that much of a difference. But I'm kind of loath to do that because I love his shape. So here's a fun fact with regards to Maxillaria variabilis. Variabilis meaning variety. There's a big, big variety of Maxillaria variabilis, considering I just mentioned that there are fragrant ones, mine happens not to be fragrant. But you can get the showman, Maxillaria variabilis. You can get the bedtime, Maxillaria variabilis. There's Maxillaria variabilis, Valentine. And there's another version of a bedtime, depending what mood and what the temperatures are, Teddy time. You can get the surf, Maxillaria variabilis as well, Beach Boys kind of style. And all jokes aside, these are the characters I am giving him, but it kind of displays as well in a fun way that Variabilis is there for a reason because the varieties can differ a lot. I will put out a small prediction there that one day the experts are going to get to the Maxillaria Variabilis genus and they are going to start finding differences and suddenly we will have a Variabilis variety XYZ as I just mentioned with a little bit of fun included because they really are vast. So speaking of a lot of varieties, we do have some channels participating today, which I think is amazing. And all their links are in the description below. And I would encourage you to please go and check out their videos because variabilis variety, there's plenty out there. But with all that variety being mentioned over and over again, maybe you are a channel, you're seeing this and saying, I have a Maxillaria variabilis and I would like to join in in future care collabs. Then please leave a comment. Let me know that you are interested and you would like to join in on future updates and we shall be in touch from there on in. Simple as that. Meanwhile, I appreciate you coming to my channel, watching my video, getting maybe your first introduction of cousin It, when he features in other videos, he's just cousin it. For formality's sake, this is 
my maxillaria variabilis and how I take care of him and get him to look like this and stroke his ego every once in a while. Otherwise, he'll probably not do this for me on the regular. He has his own personality, which I have to hmm, respect. <laughs> really appreciate your time. Thank you so much for watching. I wish you a beautiful, beautiful day. Attaching a condition to that though, that you stay safe. Take care. Bye.